In a stunning turn of events, the foundation of Ukraine's multi-billion dollar grain deal has crumbled, sending shock waves through the agricultural and economic landscapes. For months, Ukraine's grain deal has been a cornerstone of international trade, with billions of dollars worth of grains at stake. The deal not only impacted Ukraine's economy, but also held the potential to shape the global grain market. However, recent developments have thrown the deal into uncertainty. Today, we delve into the story of a once promising agreement that now hangs in the balance as Russia's refusal to extend the deal leaves Ukraine and its trading partners reeling. Join us as we present this video. But first, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Tech Revolution for more updates. With that said and done, let's dive in. So there's been quite a twist in the world of grain trade. Russia has decided to call its quits on the grain export deal they had with Ukraine. Can you believe it's happening almost a year after they started this agreement? The deal, which was extended in May, officially ended last July as per the word from Moscow's foreign ministry. And this move isn't just about Russia and Ukraine. It's got ripple effects touching base with big buyers like China, Spain, and Egypt. Those countries are kind of left in the lurch now that this pack is waving goodbye. Remember that deal? It was a bit of a lifesaver for the whole world. United Nations and Turkey had played matchmaker and since July 2022, around 33 million tons of crops sailed smoothly through the Black Sea thanks to it. This agreement was helping to stabilize things after a few economic problems. But hey, there were some cracks in the pavement. Lately, things weren't moving as smoothly due to slow ship inspections and other pesky disruptions. And now with Russia saying goodbye, Ukraine's prime trade route is in jeopardy. This whole situation could shake up Ukraine's farmers even more. Their harvests are already shrinking because of the ongoing conflict. And if export logistics go haywire, it might not be good news. Why did Russia hit the brakes? When Russia decided to step away from the grain deal, they didn't shy away from expressing their grievances. They sort of blamed hurdles in their shipments and gave a puzzled look at what they perceive as a tilt toward Western interest. It's intriguing because despite being the top dogs in the wheat shipping arena, these concerns pushed them to walk away from the deal. However, there's a glimmer of hope on the horizon. They're not entirely closing the door. They're holding out the possibility of reigniting the agreement, but only if the conditions that align with their expectations are met. It's a bit like saying Russia is out for now, but if things fall into place, they might just be back. Now what's this got to do with the bigger picture? Russia's decision to withdraw from the deal has set a lot of gears in motion. It's like a domino effect that impacts various critical aspects. You see, things like the safety assurances of smooth navigation, the vital maritime humanitarian corridor, and even the coordination center based in Istanbul, all of these are now up in the air, uncertain about their future. This move has thrown these elements into a state of flux, leaving many wondering about what lies ahead for these crucial components that once formed the backbone of the agreement. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres expressed his deep regret over Russia's decision to end the initiative and the assurances about Black Sea shipping security. He also pointed out that Russian grain and fertilizer exports have returned to normal, referring to information from industry groups in the country. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan mentioned that he plans to chat about the export deal with Russian President Vladimir Putin in their upcoming August meeting or maybe even sooner through a phone call. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen took to Twitter to say that the European Union will keep supporting food exports from Ukraine. When the deal was first struck, the UN made a parallel agreement to enhance access to Russian food and fertilizer exports. Russia had some demands, getting rid of certain obstacles to boost trade. This included the reconnection of an agricultural bank to the SWIFT international payment system. It's been a while since any new ships got the green light to join the Ukraine grain deal and Russia had put a blockade on one of three open ports. The time it takes to inspect ships has been stretching longer and only a measly one ship got clearance per day in the first half of this month. 
Just one ship, the TQ Samson, was hanging around the corridor on Monday. It left the port of Odisha over the weekend. The UN has started inspecting it as it heads out. With the deal shutting down, other trade routes like the Danube River and the neighboring European Union countries will see more action. But let's face it, those routes can be quite pricey and some countries are pushing back against the extra flow. Carlos Mira, the head of Agricultural Commodities Market Research at Rabobank, pointed out using those routes costs a lot more in terms of transportation. This raises questions about Ukraine's future production. Most of the exports will keep moving, but there might be a bit of stock building up within the country. Some traders have hinted they'd like to keep sending stuff through the Black Sea, even without the deal. But hey, that's not as simple as it sounds. It would need a thumbs up from the military, the government, and even international support. Even in the absence of the Russian Federation, President Volodymyr Zelensky didn't seem too worried. On the other hand, Turkey's foreign minister Hakan Fidan dropped some interesting thoughts about that grain deal between Ukraine and Russia. He said that there was no better option than the original plan. He brushed off this other idea the United States seems to be mulling over. In his own words, Fidan told reporters during a rare visit to Kiev that while people are exploring other paths for shipping grains, they still believe the first plan is the bee's knees. Why? Well, according to him, the alternatives come with a set of challenges that are best avoided. Once Russia bailed, the grain prices shot up, giving a bit of a headache to countries that don't have as much to spend. Guess who stepped in to help with that agreement? Turkey, with the backup of the UN. And yes, they've kept a neutral stance against the conflict. Now Russia is throwing around warnings that it might not take too kindly to ships going to or from Ukraine's Black Sea ports. Tensions in the air, right? So Ukraine wants to try new routes. They sent a cargo vessel to Istanbul, all set to test this route that the US seems to be into. But guess what? It never really left waters controlled by NATO pals, Romania and Bulgaria then it docked in Turkey. So what's Turkey's deal? Fiden, after a chat with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, made it clear that they're all about bringing the original deal back to life. That's their top priority. Zelensky seemed thrilled about the meeting, calling it important. According to him, the conversation involved the whole mess with Russia's attacks on grain exports in the Black Sea region. He threw some serious words at Russia saying their moves were pretty calculated and aimed at stirring up trouble around the globe. He's all about rebuilding security, step by step, with Turkey's support. Meanwhile, Russia's grain exports are suffering due to the whole Ukraine situation. They've been slapped with international sanctions and Kiev hasn't been shy about hitting back at Russian vessels in the Black Sea. But hey, Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Shymagel chimed in, saying the chat with Biden also covered some exciting stuff like beefing up trade, planning the future, and joint projects that have potential. They're pretty pumped about getting that free trade agreement rolling. They're playing nice with both Russia and Ukraine. They're like the middle ground, not into Western sanctions on Russia but still throwing help to Ukraine with armed supplies. And there you have it, this development is not just about grain shipments, it's a puzzle of international relations, trade dynamics, and geopolitical strategies. But before we go our separate ways, let me ask you this. What will be the long-term impact of Russia's decision on global food prices and trade routes? Can the original agreement be salvaged or will alternative paths take its place? How will Ukraine's farmers navigate the challenges posed by disrupted trade routes? And what role will other nations play in filling the gap left by the collapse deal? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Finally, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to Tech Revolution for more. Thank you for watching and see you again in our next videos.